happy that we had a chance to share the uh, findings of the report with the audience of the Institute here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, say that uh, what we do, we are trying to contribute to the debate and trying to stimulate the thinking. And we find that the futures approach is a very useful way of bringing, pe bringing people into the future and scenarios help us with it because through them we confront people with the reality that may develop in a number of years. Um, just quickly, uh, what I'm going to talk about, and myself and Connor are going to share the presentation. Uh, first of all, just a quick background about the project. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about the futures approach. I know that many of you are familiar because my, one of my colleagues, like Mahoney, I know he's been working with the Institute on the Scenarios uh, on Climate Change. Uh, then, uh, like, uh, the report is quite big and I uh, would welcome people to read it. I'm just going to run past through the most important findings. And this includes the key uncertainties for the future, because those are the issues that will drive, that will um, shape future in certain directions, depending how they develop. Uh, then I will uh, present the three alternative scenarios for the future of Dublin that we've developed uh, in this project. And uh, I will, like, uh, there's a report has many different um, policy actions and recommendations uh, under uh, five different headings. I will focus on five, which I think would be perhaps most relevant to this group here. And then just a conclusion. So... Uh, the report Dublin at the crossroads, I think we all feel that Ireland, Dublin, the whole world is really standing at the crossroads and it's very difficult to see how things will develop, especially looking at the current economic crisis we are in. And every day we are reading different stories in the news trying to understand uh, what may happen and which way the future will actually go. Uh, even today there are important talks uh, taking place at the G8 summit and I've been reading some uh, commentary from it and there's talks about climate change as well and there seems to be a certain direction Barack Obama is uh, taking a lead in trying to drive the, that issue forward. So we'll see how it develops. Even today maybe a, a day that is changing the direction of the future is going. Uh, why we decided to look at Dublin specifically is because we've, um, in the last two years, we've uh, worked on the project called Twice the Size. And uh, in this project, uh, we looked at the future of the eight Irish gateways that were, um, that were uh, identified the National Spatial Strategy. We worked with the, uh, for the Urban Forum and uh, Connor and his colleagues from the School of Spatial Planning worked with the Futures Academy trying to see what is the future of the Irish Gateways using the scenario approach which I will explain in a moment. And interestingly Dublin wasn't part of the study but it came out as the main driver for the future of Ireland and main driver for the future of the Gateways because their future is very closely linked with what is going to happen with Dublin region and the development on the East Coast. So we decided uh, with the Dublin Chamber of Commerce and with the Dublin City Council trying to look at the, what are the specific futures for Dublin. Uh, I know that some of you are familiar with the process, but just to uh, I suppose remind everyone uh, that it is the methodology we are using. It's a systematic, rigorous methodology that helps us to explore how the future may, may develop. Uh, in the Futures Academy, we develop an approach called pr Prospective Through Scenarios. And uh, the main steps are, first of all, we need to set the strategic question. So what is the issue, issue we want to look at? Uh, for this project, we, look at the, we basically set a very general question asking what the future of Dublin might be like in 2030. The next step was looking at uh, trying to identify what are the driving forces of change, the trends and issues that will shape the future of the city region. Obviously, we looked not only at Dublin itself, but we looked at the global stage. We looked at what's happening in European uh, context and also in Ireland, because what like world is connected and everything within is connected. So we need to, I suppose, reflect those connections. Uh, then, from um, the, we analysed the driving forces of change, trying to understand what are the key uncertainties that will. I suppose I always say key uncertainties kind of help to um, understand in which direction the future can go. They will decide the things that are events, sometimes they are trends, sometimes they are most important decisions, things that are happening that can flip the future one way or another. I have very, one of my favorite examples from actually Poise Science study was uh, in Limerick, we were looking at the, what are the pivot uncertainties for Limerick. And the participants of the workshop identified them moving out of Limerick as one of the key uncertainties that can really change the future of the city. It happened, unfortunately, it had a lot of negative effects. 
but that's the type of thing that I'm talking about. Then from analysis of those, we created three alternative scenarios. We didn't really do much on the testing policy options. It was done very much so in-house and uh, it is very useful to identify turning points and understand, uh, I suppose, different paths from the future <laughs> from the future path, how they may go forward. Uh, at the end, we produce perspective, and those are the policy actions recommendations that, are, that we think are really important that we need to address going forward. So, uh, the, we identified key, uh, eight key uncertainties for the future of Dublin. First of all, is the central government support for Dublin. Uh, for a long time, it has been recognized that uh, there was really a lack of visible governments, national government support for Dublin region. And that kind of had the major implications for how the region has developed, especially during times of growth. Uh, it in manifested itself at the levels of investment, for example, in a very important infrastructural projects, but also in terms of the, uh, govern the reform of the government structures. There was uh, legislation to prepare, trying to create a regional authority for Dublin, but that was shared in early 2000, and we still are debating the, hopefully there will be an introduction of direct elected mayors, but there is definitely a need for a government that would look strategically for the future of the region. We don't have that at the moment, I think, and many of my colleagues agree with me, Dublin really suffers from that because there's no long-term future direction, there's no strategic thinking that would look at the whole region. We have the government is very much so fragmented and many different stakeholders are responsible for it. And even if there is, in the recent years we've observed, and even doing this project, there's increased co col collaboration between different actors, uh, there is the lack of the, a formal arrangement, a formal framework that could facilitate development of such a strategy. Another thing was providing efficient infrastructure, and I, I think that was something that hit me the strongest from the... We've conducted a workshop and a number of strategic interviews, and we also did horizon scanning, just to let you know that it's not just the Futures Academy and a number of people. That we had a fairly broad range of people we've consulted with. Uh, was the providing efficient infrastructure, and the two types of infrastructure was the public transport, and the ICT, the communication infrastructure, are the key things that the company is really needing. And it, there are, and I think many of us are aware, are strongling the growth of the of the region. Maintaining social stability and closing the gap between rich and poor was another very strong impact. And especially in the scenarios, it came out very strongly that maintaining social stability, making sure that our society is healthy, is very important and can cause, if that's not addressed, can cause major problems, especially now when we have economic crisis, lots of people getting unemployed. Uh, there are social repercussions that will have a uh, very strong effects and we just hope that they won't be the most negative ones. There are already, I suppose, anecdotal evidence about rise, race of racism and there are lots of kind of negative social behaviour being, being observed. So this is a very important issue for the going for the long term future. Uh, Dublin and Ireland have the aspiration to become knowledge economy and it has been, I think, in the, in the global thinking, it has been acknowledged that to do so we really need to have ability to educate, attract and retain highly talented and skilled people that will bring those companies that we want to attract here, that we want to live here and they want to have a certain quality of life and the city do have to meet certain criteria. Uh, I already mentioned the reforming the government structure so it is a very important issue and I suppose what is very important is when the reform happens and how it will happen, whether the no, new structures that will be set up will have enough powers where they have especially financial backing to do whatever needs to be done for the city. Uh, the economic development, I don't think so, I need to uh, elaborate on that one. It's obvious, I think, to everyone. Uh, the two things that are very important are also access to resources and the effects of climate change. I suppose we are all very well about the energy resources, but there are resources like food, land, and water that are becoming more and more important. And I think last year and two years ago, we were kind of we had a, a little taste of the food crisis when the crisis started to grow up. Ireland is very vulnerable with a lot of our food being imported to the country, and with the combination of rising prices, 
and shortages of workers in places, for example, where we are importing the food, it may have very strong repercussions. It's something that we really need to look quite closely at. The effects of climate change, I think there are two main aspects to it, which is the um, adaptation side, how do we prepare for the possible implications and how do we make sure that all the sectors of society are prepared, but also uh, trying to um, decrease the emissions. And I think the very important issue here is how do we make sure that uh, the measures we implement, the policies we develop, will be equal and kind of will have the social solidarity that they require. I move to the scenarios now. Uh, the first one is uh, feet of clay. Uh, in this scenario, Dublin is very much, uh, like a, first of all, the setting the global picture. It's, uh, the world came out of the recession quite quickly and we kind of uh, went back to our old ways. Uh, it's very much so a globalized world. Uh, there is a lot of libertarianism. Uh, the markets are open. Um, the national governments are losing their powers and they're weakening uh, for the, and at the same time corporations and other alliances are getting the power. Uh, is, it's a world that there is a collaboration, but it's very much so driven by economic benefits and economic uh, gain. Uh, it's very much a world of losers and winners. Uh, there is the gap between rich and poor. It's quite uh, big. Uh, the values uh, people uh, have very individual, individualistic and materialistic uh, uh, values, and they dominate how we live our lifestyles and also how we relate to everything else in terms of economy and environment. Uh, the environmental action in this scenario is rather slow and it is very much so left to the devices of open market which not always work very well and it kind of works mainly t even if the uh, companies and corporations recognize the importance of uh, resources and uh, trying to uh, address the environmental problems they are not always willing to invest uh, quite heavy sums of money sometimes to deal with those problems, so, so they look for the kind of halfway solutions that will help them in some ways, but don't really address the, the real problems. Um, the, Europe is an enlarged uh, federation, but it is very much so um, a Europe that went back to its root of being just facilitating economic uh, collaboration, trade, movement of people. It kind of stepped back from its uh, current more regulatory, more kind of uh, aspiration-driven role. Um, the main, uh, the main uh, economic sectors in Europe are ICT technologies, energy, air transport, pharmaceuticals and financial services. Ireland is a strong global player, but like the rest of the world, it is very much so a country of winners and losers. We have a uh, very strongly developed East when we have uh, urban conurbation going from Belfast to Waterford, and it's a very much so a, a patchwork of different of different areas. Uh, Dublin region has two and a half million people uh, and it's a part of that Eastern Conurbation. It is, uh, like other cities within that region, governed by elected mayor. Um, especially, as I said, it's a complex patchwork of modern public transport infrastructure, high-tech parks when the different corporations have their uh, almost mini cities, uh, cloud computing centers, uh, gated communities, ghetto, there are uh, farms of agribusiness, agri uh, there are wind farms and very few scarce green spaces. Uh, very interestingly, for example, Wicklow Mountains and Dublin, Mount Dublin Mountains now we have, they are inhabited now and kind of the wonderful uh, green resource we have, it's gone, almost. Uh, the economy is thriving, although some parts of the city has, have pockets like 30% unemployment and very much so it's quite unequal. Uh, the main uh, sectors of uh, the economy are bio and nanotechnology and agribusiness, which is uh, import, uh, exporting a lot of food to a much larger UK market, and also global financial software cluster. Uh, as the environmental pressures never, environmental problems never were on the top of agenda, 
uh, there are environmental pressures marking and the, the region has very much so shortages of water. It has to cope with increased flooding and there's a strong coastal erosion. Also, biological <coughs> pollution uh, in the agribusiness is something that is uh, becoming a real threat to the food supplies. 35% uh, of energy in the region is renewable, 40% nuclear, and 25% comes from fossil fuels. Fragmentation of the society uh, is very visible and it's becoming stronger and stronger. There are new movements, religious movements, that have very worrying uh, implications. Terrorist groups are emerging. Also, Dublin has very strong criminalized, international criminal population. And uh, in 2030, despite the fact that the city seems to be quite a strong player on the global face, because of the social and environmental pressures, uh, the future doesn't look so bright. I'm sure it looks bright for many, but not for all. I suppose I've been trying to put some more environmental side to the, the scenario. Uh, one of the things for Ireland, because Ireland in recent years, the environmental uh, movement action has been driven directly by EU because of the EU stepping back with, the, with its regulatory role. It means that Ireland may kind of step back as well with putting so much importance in trying to comply with the regulation, the EU regulation in environmental matters. Uh, also with the weaker governments, uh, companies don't feel so much obliged to, to do that. Uh, I suppose it is a very much a materialistic society, so goods, different type of goods will be on the agenda and there is a potential for if the nanotechnology develops and it is a world of very rapid technological development, there is a potential of decentralization of manufacturing which may ease off some of the pressures from, for example, energy used for transport and production may become much more localized, but there is, it's unlikely to happen within that time frame of 2030 but something that perhaps we could think about. Uh, also, there is a, uh, because the climate change is really not, uh, there's not much done trying to abate and uh, make sure that uh, we reduce the emissions to not have very drastic uh, impacts. Uh, the impacts are, some people are coping quite well with the impacts, the, the ones who can afford it, but the poorest, poorest section of society are increasingly more hit with the with the impacts and, for example, one of the cases in the scenarios, we have an outbreak of the disease that uh, traveled from Africa and um, a lot of people died within an uh, area that is affected. I suppose the scenario is supposed to challenge and this, we uh, specifically have them kind of on the very different scales. So if they, some of the things I just presented feel uncomfortable and feel that they won't happen, it's there to challenge you. The second scenario, winds of change, it's a completely different world. It's very much a change world, uh, which is much more peaceful, much more equitable and environmentally stable. And it's driven by uh, global collaboration on environmental issues like climate change. It's driven by a uh, change of the economic models towards more natural capitalism from the current exponential model. And uh, it's also driven by uh, economic, I suppose, trying to um, address the scarcity of the resources uh, that we are facing and looking at efficiency measures and trying to um, develop economically at the same time. Uh, EU has 36 member states and it's very much so effective federal government. Uh, in the global scale, uh, EU leadership in the sustainable development is unquestionable and it's one of the major drivers of the agenda within in the world. <coughs> Ireland is now a model of a Swedish social democracy. A new national special strategy has been implemented and we have two urban centres on each coast. Uh, in Isle, on the east coast we have an urban corridor, uh, very well planned and uh, with very efficient infrastructure from, stretching from Belfast to Dublin and on the west we have uh, three cities working together in the corridor which is Galway, Limerick and Cork. The country is much greener but it's also much less wealthy and uh, if you look at the wealth that was generated or the economic growth more the point that was generated within the last 10 years, uh, there's not much of the same left. 
Uh, Dublin city region is governed by Dublin Metropolitan Authority, which is headed by the directly elected mayor and is part of the Eastern uh, Corridor. As the whole world really is much uh, just, uh, much juster place with good quality of life, efficient public transport system, and more even society, the, uh, the gap between rich and poor is much, na much more narrower and uh, the society car care much more for the, the vulnerable. Interestingly, the way how the recession was dealt with um, uh, a government introduced a new policy basically for people to work less by, by, but work all. So in that way we don't have such a high unemployment even if people are earning less, much more uh, spread, I suppose the gains are spread. Uh, the WC economy very much so reflects the uh, drive towards sustainability and it's, uh, it's about clean technology, it's about the carbon emissions, uh, the financial services in Dublin are specialising now in the emission trading. Uh, green intervention, uh, how it happened? First of all, there has been a carbon tax has been introduced and in each of the scenarios there is some form of carbon taxes but in this one they are very drastic. If you eat in a restaurant you know how many, uh, how much carbon was produced to uh, cook your meal. So this is very much reflected in the price so uh, the least, I suppose, the, the, the more carbon neutral product the cheaper it is because you don't have to pay for the, the carbon emissions. Uh, another uh, thing that was incorporated in the scenarios, the WCT uh, Council have, and they are actually doing this, they have employed the Natural Step Network, basically uh, trying to make whatever they do sustainable within certain principles. And that was very successful and spread in the whole region. Uh, there also has been a urban growth limits, basically caps on the where the city has, can develop, trying to reach their cities and trying to make sure that the sprawl is contained and uh, the way we develop transport system does reflect how people, the mobility does reflect where people live and try to build around it. Uh, really, I, th I think what summarized it was a systems approach to system, sustainably looking at the city as a whole and trying to imagine how it would work, work all together when the all pieces are interlinked. Uh, interestingly, uh, because of there's much less resources, people are forced to collaborate and then one of the examples is the universities within Dublin collaborate and they kind of uh, share the space and there's no repetition, no duplication. Uh, I suppose the the scenario is quite positive and, uh, as we spoke to different people, quite unlikely. I suppose it's important to uh, say it is possible to happen even if, comparing to other two scenarios, it's less likely. And I think we need to uh, think that we are looking at 20 years' time and within that, day, that time certain changes are possible to facilitate that. Um, the less negative, I suppose the somewhat negative side of the scenario is the people's life is much more controlled, the government has much stronger, uh, uh, much stronger powers I suppose, and they implement much stricter laws and uh, some people rebel against it, other people appreciate it as something that, that gives them the stability and kind of let them sleep peacefully. Uh, I suppose in 2030, uh, the main threat for Dublin is the fact that it's losing its, losing its uh, competitiveness to, uh, na nationally uh, because the Western Corridor is developing and people are moving there for the quality of life, which is greater, and also it cannot really compete with uh, mega cities that have uh, grown elsewhere, so there are some international threats. The last scenario, it was the last decade, this third scenario. In this scenario, the world is a uh, very fragmented uh, world. Uh, it's questioning the globalization, it's questioning the technological development that has been driving a lot of what's happening. Uh, nations are starting to look inward. Uh, people are becoming much more patriotic. They're coming back to find their own cultural identity. They're, they're going back to the roots. Uh, there are conflicts in the world around resources. There is rapid urbanization, which is also uh, connected to the sprawl in many places. There are mounting social and environmental pressures and rising crime that has international dimension. Uh, 
EU is much more weakened and its main agenda is really to keep its borders safe and uh, safety and security is something that they care the most. Uh, there are positive local initiatives in many places trying to uh, deal with different problems and there's a lot of innovation in how people do things because resources are quite limited. Ireland is a falling uh, somewhere in between a modern global connected economy where we think we are now uh, and a kind of inward looking state very much so uh, with patriotic uh, movements emerging. A uh, very interesting part about the scenario in 2010s, well, why it's called the last decade, Ireland went through a very strong political and economic turmoil trying to cope with the recession but with not very good results. Uh, in terms of Dublin, Dublin has 2 million people now. It's still the economic ending of Ireland, but internationally its, uh, its position has decreased uh, a lot. And in 2030, in the Merson's ranking, it's in the 88th position, which is a, quite a drop from, I think, 25th at the moment. Uh, the prolonged first recession and political trauma of 2010s had a very damaging effect on the city. The city council uh, and the other authorities didn't have much tools trying to shape the future. They didn't have much uh, money for investment. Uh, the local government reform was stalled, so there was no uh, possibility to try to come up with a vision, come up with a with collaboration. It was very much so collaboration done on a very small scale. Um, it is struggling with unabated sprawl because people are kind of coming back. Uh, there's a strong drive to have their own house, their own uh, piece of land, somewhere they, they can grow their own food, trying to cope with the very high food prices. So people are sprawling. There's not much cohesion there. It's it's very much so reflects the chaotic uh, sense of the whole world around it. In 2020s, people are really fed up and they started to move and there's a new movement called Work Together for a Better Island and there's a lot of civic initiatives where people take hands into their own initiative, into their, their own hands and try to address the different problems they are struggling with. Uh, the region's economy, despite the problems, is relatively stable, although it's not a really thriving economy. It's based on creative industry, data management, heritage tourism, which is one of the successes for, for Dublin. And it goes, goes back to Irish identity and trying to recreate the, the really good things about Irish culture. Uh, also about small scale manufacturing because of the, a lot of things uh, came back to a very much so localized production. Uh, there is a poor quality of life for many because of the congestion, because of the poor environmental conditions, also reduced mobility because of the high prices of oil and also uh, the lower incomes. Uh, the society is much more inward looking uh, but has a very strong city and, co and national identity. In 2030, although it's still, Dublin, it's still struggles with a lot of problems, there is hope because people, there is a, a very strong energy within people and you can feel the change is happening. So those are the three scenarios. Uh, we've uh, analyzed them and trying to come up, come up with a range of policy uh, actions and recommendations. Uh, I just talked briefly about five of them. The first one is a long-term comprehensive comprehensive future strategy for the Dublin city region. We don't know how the future is going to develop and I think it's some of the scenarios talk about quite uh, strong growth, other it's very much so stagnation, other it's a slow growth. We really need to think long term and plan for the different things that may happen. So I think it is very important to look maybe up to 2050 and develop a comprehensive spatial strategy that would look at the, that wouldn't allow to happen what has happened uh, over the last 10 years with the sprawl we have with the social and health consequences we have at the moment plus the environmental, very strong environmental consequences. So it's trying to plan very much so into the future and trying to integrate the different parts of it. So integrate land use with transportation but we'll also look at the climate change and possible effects and how we can by spatial planning cope with it. It's very much so looking at economic activity and social activity altogether, so a system approach. Uh, I suppose city regional government structure is something that is very important to get it right and to make sure that if we do create the structure, it has the power, it has the strategic, the cap capability of the strategic vision and has the finances 
to implement whatever is necessary for the region. Effective city infrastructure is something that needs to be addressed, and especially in terms of transport. Uh, transport should really create mobility so people can uh, move around the city and they don't have to rely on the, on the car, because that's a big problem from many perspectives, not only climate change and emissions, but also social side and the time that is being lost uh, through congestion. Uh, I suppose the, something that is very important and we really need to start to get our thinking about it's about the resource efficient economy and it is not only about the city but planning our infrastructure that we need to look how we use our resources most efficiently but it's about the whole way of thinking about how we design things, how, how do we plan things, how we it, it's really about transforming our, our thinking and finally we, something that is slightly less related to environment but very important, important is community development, social inclusion and youth education. Without healthy society we can't move forward and uh, the environmental pressures won't be addressed. We really need to, people are the main wealth of the city and we need to look after it. And I suppose something that cuts, cut across all of it, we need to work together with the people itself, with the citizens but also with businesses and everybody who has the uh, different knowledge, different skills to tap in together. Mm, in the report we have uh, five boxes we c which talk about uh, small different initiatives that can inspire for the future. Green taxis is one. It's just a, a small example of something what can be done to create awareness and to kind of develop a green image for Dublin. Another thing which uh, I know you've uh, pointed out uh, in the invitation was the Emissions Trading Institute and it is very much so from the economic point of view trying to keep a sector, a financial sector that is already present in Dublin and very much so the emissions trading is something that will come on board. Why don't you use the skills, the knowledge that we have trying to develop a new niche that we can uh, basically place our bets for the future. Uh, in conclusion, change is taking place and that was one of the most wonderful thing, uh, things about this study that we've noticed. People, there is a, first of all, there's a growing recognition that Dublin is important for Ireland and that's the highlight for me was the publication of the National Competitiveness Council report in April this year when they recommended uh, investment prioritizing Dublin as one of the, the key things, recognizing that cities are the future and the, the, dri the economic drivers. Uh, the fact that the Dublin City Council is using the natural step approach, which is trying to get the grasp of the roots of sustainability and really apply it in real life. And uh, finally, there's a lot of collaboration be uh, between different stakeholders, not only within, uh, between four local authorities, which is much stronger than five, six years ago, uh, but also within, uh, between the industry and I suppose the creative Dublin Alliance is one of the things that is, it's a, for me it's a good development depending how it goes, uh, the collaboration between the universities, Dublin City Council and industry. Uh, as you've seen from the different futures, there are positive and negative things. There's lots of different threats that we really need to be aware of and try to address, but there's lots of different opportunities and the future is in our hands, we can shape it. So, thank you. Right.